and we're live. Hello everybody. My name is Dan Eisenberg and I'm one of the leaders of a project called Scale Up Milwaukee which is a project to foster an environment in the Milwaukee region that supports amazing growth by amazing companies of all kinds. We've been working since April and we have some momentum going in the Milwaukee region. I want to emphasize our partners. We have a great group of local partners and if anybody's out there listening and wants to be part of this, there's always ways to get involved. Partners include Gale's organization, the Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation, University of Wisconsin at Milwaukee, the Mayor's Office, WIDA, the Governor's Office, the County Executive's Office, the Greater Milwaukee Committee, I can go on and on, but I also have to mention the generosity of American Express Open Division. So I think I've got everybody uh, with us. We have uh, three experts. We're going to be talking a little bit about the opportunities that, um, well, you'll explain it better than I, but computation, very complex and advanced computation, offers for scaling up businesses in the Milwaukee region. We have with us, why don't you introduce one after the other, Gail McCaskill, why don't you start, just introduce yourself and give a brief description, what do you do? Great, I'm uh, Gail Towers McCaskill and I'm the sector manager for WEC and um, this particular project is a special project for WEDC in terms of providing programming for established businesses that we really have not previously um, had pro programming designed to assist them, you know, really unless companies had a problem or a specific growth um, or, uh, building project uh, were the only areas where we helped them and so this is something that's great. That's great. Jay? I'm the Executive Director of the Milwaukee Institute, a seven-year-old uh, nonprofit research foundation which provides uh, high-performance computing, uh, in particular modeling and simulation and visualization tools for companies that uh, whose engineering research and development programs require such tools. And uh, Jay is a former professor. I'm also a professor of types. Uh, he's a former professor, although he didn't admit it. And he's a serial entrepreneur, although I didn't admit that either, and has been an executive at uh, Johnson Controls. So we'll, we're going to come back on, on those, those, those things. Uh, Greg, introduce yourself. Uh, good day. I hope my volume is OK. This is yes. Greg Dutti. I'm a uh, director at the Milwaukee Institute as well. Uh, recently came on board after over 20 years of product development and service development at IBM, as well as uh, five years at AT&T developing product. That's fantastic. So I'm just going to start off with a general question. What we're interested in is we're in growing businesses. So we're not interested in small, in tiny. We're interested in, in, in getting large because that's where all the economic and social development benefits come from entrepreneurship. And so what's the big deal about the Milwaukee Institute and this great new program that you've launched with, uh, with Gail and her colleagues? Why is that going to help us grow companies? Well, I'll, uh, I'll start. Greg and chime in, but uh, we are uh, uh, trying to assist the entrepreneurial, small, and medium-sized business community with increasing their value propositions by uh, the use of modern technology. Uh, in the manufacturing uh, sector, for example, uh, traditional design and engineering processes were primarily uh, uh, traditional engineering through CAD systems, through uh, building multiple prototypes and so on. As uh, most of us have heard over the last few years, uh, new products and service designs can be much more effectively done in silico, that is, as a simulated system in a computer environment. Keep, keep it yet, simple for us, Jay. You're a professor and we, we're, we're, we're all simple people, so use small words. Well, uh, that's part of the problem. And, uh, uh, if you want to compete in a technical world, you have to learn to understand the technical world. So uh, okay. it's one of our challenges. Market and actually, market, Milwaukee but, Institute uh, serves as the liaison uh, to for these companies to help them access that type of technical um, uh, ca capability without having to learn the jargon internally. 
Okay, so not not the really high, high, high level market, just enough to, to sort of make a business. So let me ask you this. Um, I was looking, you know, I've heard this mentioned by other people and I've seen it, and Metavante, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, is a company that grew big and was sold in financial technology. Why Milwaukee and Wisconsin? What, what, what's special that, you know, I don't think people know this, but sort of under the radar there's all this um, in computational intensive business that has already been formed in financial technologies and other why why is that happening here well let me uh, let me take a shot at it uh, as I think I mentioned in the beginning I, I came from IBM after 22 years part of that time was spent around a, an initiative called smarter planet and and there's yes. a realization that uh, things are more connected they're more intelligent and they're integrated and uh, Milwaukee, just like any other big city, uh, is, is coming of age to understand and realize that when you develop a product, uh, when you put a great idea together, it's not in a silo, it's not standalone anymore. Uh, it needs to be cross-integrated, not only with uh, customers and partners, but also with the amount of data that's being produced. So, so now with these, these efforts, you can go deeper into data sets, the mega data, and really understand and gain insight. I understand that, Greg, Greg. But why Milwaukee? It's I when I, I've been a dozen times in the last six months, and every time I hear of a new company in financial technologies using computational excellence of some kind, uh, it's sort of making making headway. And uh, what 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 is it? Or it's just random. Uh, it's, no, it's, it's not Milwaukee. random, Dan. It's a uh, you have to recognize that the Midwest has historically been uh, a, a very key. Uh, player in the financial transaction business. We're midway between the coasts. We don't live in a geogra geographically unstable place where there's earthquakes and whatever. So there has been a large banking and uh, financial transaction uh, service business in the Milwaukee region for many years. It turns out that the financial community is one of the biggest and leading users of high performance computing because they're doing uh, financial transactions on the commodity and, and uh, financial exchanges. They have uh, lots of credit card clearing functions here and there's an awful lot of big data analytics that they must do. So when M&I Bank spun out Metavante and Metavante was acquired by FIS, it is because they had a very strong IT analytics capability. There's My understanding my understanding, I would correct me if I'm wrong, is that there's also some professors in the area that are really experts. I'm, I, I'm not talking about the institute yet. We'll come back to the institute. But in some of the universities, there's some pre professors that are really world class in the area of, of computation and also in the area of uh, uh, financial technologies and financial services. Does that ring any bells? Well, there's, there, there's certainly a cohort of uh, technical computing folks at UW-Madison and the School of Engineering, Mechanical Engineering, what have you. There is a, a, a very strong program at the uh, Lubar School in supply chain uh, management and there's an awful lot of uh, analytics associated with that. Uh, I think those are all laudable uh, capabilities and we should probably emphasize that more in the region. Uh, but uh, what uh, what the uh, Institute has been trying to do is to, to apply that technology not in those specialized places but in the entrepreneurial community which is generally uh, uh, very energetic folks without a lot of end-use experience and so uh, it, to your point about uh, me using big words uh, I've been part of the uh, mentorship program uh, from startup Wisconsin to uh, vet transfer, what have you, I'm on, the, on the boards of many of them, and it's very difficult to uh, to uh, help students uh, or, or entrepreneurs use this technology when they don't really understand the end use points. And, and I just ahead, want to make the point too that it's not just um, so that we um, don't look at it just from the financial services sector, but really on the manufacturing side and specifically the small to mid-size companies, that these capabilities have already been accessed by the larger corporations, but we have such a strong supply chain. I'm, I'm glad that uh, Jay brought that up. So from a supply chain perspective, how do you help those companies to become more competitive, to compete with some of, the, especially in the, the very large uh, primes and tier one uh, 
companies and the requirements that they have. So this kind of programming makes that that type of business available to the small to mid-sized companies that, right. that work so well in Wisconsin. It sounds like it's an incredible s uh, set of assets, and I want to talk a little in a, in a bit about some what some of those other assets are, but just diving into the program that you have with the Institute, tell me how it works, uh, Greg or Gail or, or Jay, how does, how does this pr new program work? That I'm an entrepreneur, I think I can get a competitive advantage by using the computational resources and know-how at the Institute, what do I do? I'll, I'll take a swing at it, Jay, if uh, you would allow me. Uh, right now, uh, there's a couple of models. Uh, the model that we're involved in with uh, WEDC is to provide some funding where uh, grant uh, participants or candidates uh, who are selected automatically get put into our process where they get to uh, take their idea, uh, develop it, and use our uh, computational resources uh, to the generosity of grants. The other way a company or a startup can get involved is to approach us directly and uh, sign up into the institute as a member and uh, as a collaborator. And in doing that, there's a, there's a small fee, but in doing that, you have access uh, to our computational resources, both best practices and consulting, as well as the hardware software. And is this competitive? This uh, the first part, the comp competition the, with the, the program with WDC, is that a competitive program? Yes, and actually our funding, what we did was we provided funding for a minimum of number of companies to pilot this and to be able to track their results so that then we could expand it in the future to offer it to more companies from a, a grant um, award basis. Um, there was an application process that through WEDC and some of our networks we were able to distribute to consortium of companies the opportunity. So, um, you know, and now we're in the process of actually... And who, who does the selection? Who, who does the selection of uh, the winners or the, the participants? The Institute has a formal process which uh, uh, engages WEDC towards the end as we've done the technical selection. But I want to emphasize that we have the privilege of supporting a, a number of WDC initiatives in addition to the funded one that Gail's speaking about. WDC is a strong supporter of, for example, the, the Water Council and the 100 plus companies that are in the Water Council. Greg is a Water Council member. The Water Council and the Institute have an alliance. And there are many companies uh, talking to us about computational resources in that domain that don't have anything to do, per se, with the uh, challenge grant, but uh, but that we're, we, the Institute, are, are very, very pleased to help WDC in their economic development activities. You know, one of the things that I'm an expert in entrepreneurship ecosystems, that's what I do. The um, One of the things that you notice around the world when you see entrepreneurship bubbling up and people make a big deal of it and they say, oh, it's a bunch of startups, we have a startup community, we have... Well, when you look at every one of those, it's not just startups. You see the startups, they come out of big companies. As you say, one was, Ventavente was spun out of a bank. You see um, big companies that are involved. You see, you see small manufacturers. You see professional services. You see institutes and universities and government support. You see all these things happening together. I want to focus a little on the role of the larger companies, which is essential in fostering entrepreneurship in the so-called smaller ones. Are big companies involved in what you do, and will they be involved in this in this program to help the the, the, the entrepreneurial ventures get a leg up on the market? Well, you two two answers. Uh, one, uh, since our founding in 2007, we, we, our primary users are big companies, and support of their innovation programs in their engineering, research, and development spaces, such as uh, Rockwell, JCI. Uh, there, there, there's a, a, a number of them, and they're available for... GE, GE Healthcare, I assume, uh, Badger Meter. Yeah, we haven't worked with GE Healthcare, even though we've tried. Uh, okay. But uh, GE is so large, they have an awful lot of their own computational resources. But uh, we support the medical college with uh, bioscience research. We support uh, uh, a manufacturing company. So... Uh, uh, JD, it is can I interrupt for just a second? The reason I ma mentioned the names is because the world may be watching here, and the world doesn't know 
that Harley Davidson and GE Healthcare and Walkwell Automation and Badger and etc. They don't know that they're headquartered in Milwaukee. They don't know that. So I'm just remind telling people that I'm giving some advertising. But go ahead. I interrupted. We like that. <laughs> I'm sure they have you may think it's not, you may think it's either obvious or not important, but I think it's either obvious and it's extremely important. I had somebody in overseas tell me that's amazing. I was telling about the water council activity. This is a true story. I was telling somebody very senior about the water council. This is a, a country where water is very very developed, and I was saying you know you should come and see what's happening in Milwaukee, and they're coming, and uh, and they said you know it's amazing. I didn't know that Canada had such interest in water. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. Well, Dan, just to uh, reinforce that point, there are some great companies here uh, in Wisconsin. A lot of them manufacturing based. You mentioned Badger, Badger Meter, A.O. Smith yes. uh, is yet is yet another one. Briggs and Stratton. Yes. And, uh, we've been talking to them all. Uh, the interesting part, uh, as an entrepreneur, I consider myself an entrepreneur, starting a lot of uh, efforts within companies uh, rather than an entrepreneur from outside. But uh, these computational resources are either underdeveloped or, or not existent in some of the uh, companies uh, in Wisconsin and, and and that's what we're really uh, hoping to do at the Institute to uh, build awareness to give them a taste of uh, how they can accelerate their product development process uh, and if that means that they develop the product inside the company great if that means something spins out and uh, becomes a uh, standalone company that creates more jobs uh, that it wouldn't have inside the company even better and, and, and to cut into your question also, Dan, in terms of what are we doing to attract the bigger companies, that's a little bit of our strategy in our division at WEDC, which is business and industry development. So we're working with the primes and the um, tier one companies in the different industry clusters. And as we start to nurture and provide appropriate tools to our supply chain partners, then we can introduce that and market that to the larger companies so that we build those relationships. Um, but they need to know that those companies have the capacity to deliver product based on their specifications, which are uh, much higher in terms of technology requirements. I hope that in the future that some of these companies will also say, you know what, these, these entrepreneurs are so innovative, in part because of the support from the Institute and things like that, the Water Council, you know, that they're so innovative that we can also get access to real in world-class innovation. Uh, to keep us competitive as a big company located in Denmark or in South Africa or wherever. So um, we, I promise. Go in, ahead, Jay. There's an important and, and subtle uh, underlying requirement here, Dan, and that is that uh, it isn't the technology so much, uh, computers and software and what have you. It's competent people who know how to use that technology to support innovation. Right, and, right. Uh, one Absolutely. of the challenges the region has is it doesn't have enough of those workers. So the Institute has a, a not so subtle uh, agenda which is to encourage uh, collaboration between commercial and academic institutions so that we can actually develop a workforce that's competent in this space rather than have them graduate and get on an airplane and go to one of the coasts. We need to Amen. keep those people here and we need to keep them here through uh, challenging job opportunities. Well, it's a it's a it's a virtuous cycle again. When you see, just as the bigger companies are an essential part of the entrepreneurship ecosystem, talent is also an essential part of the entrepreneurship ecosystem. And everywhere you see an excess of talent that likes where they live, you see entrepreneurship burgeoning. So you see the big companies, you see the the oversupply of talent, and you see a few other things that happen. These are the dirty little secrets because people like to say startups they sort of happen by themselves, but they don't. They build on assets, and and you're, you're right. Well, it's sure. it's not just technical. We all support. Uh, the Institute has the privilege through these challenge grants of helping uh, the young, mostly the entrepreneurs, not the entrepreneurs, as Greg pointed out, uh, acquire the, the experience and are able to observe benefit of having these tools in their pockets. I mean, it's a, uh, we, we, you can't go to UWM or Marquette or any of these schools and actually find degree programs where they teach this stuff. In fact, it's our experience that the most productive technical computing people have their degrees in other disciplines. 
biochemistry, uh, sociology, what have you, and they teach themselves how to use high-performance computing because they didn't get taught that when they were in school. And we hope that these kinds of catalyst grants actually help both academics as well as commercial folks understand that the skill set is really an admix of a number of things. So um, I've promised to keep these hangouts very short, to 15 to 20 minutes. So we're going to wrap up now. And I just want to see if there's anything that Greg, you, Gail, or Jay would like to add before I sum up. Uh, yeah, again, I just would like to reiterate from a WDC or a state perspective the idea that it is about providing the correct tools. And I think you talk about that all the time. What's the role of government or the policy um, that you look at? And I think providing these kinds of tools is exactly the thing that uh, Scale Up is um, looking to provide and Milwaukee Institute is looking to provide. So it's a, it's a good, um, we're very excited and we're, we're anxious for the word to get out. Uh, Greg, parting shot? Party shot, Wisconsin is a great place to do business. And How surprised to, I am. Uh, <laughs> and to live. Uh, we really appreciate uh, the help of WEC as well as all the other partners. And maybe it's a Midwest thing, uh, but it's a, just a great place to do business. Great. Jay? Well, we thank you, Dan, for the opportunity to share with uh, your audience. And uh, if there are any questions uh, further, uh, please feel free to contact us. Either Greg or I or one of our staff would be happy to speak with you. That's right. You, everyone, the, the smart people know how to use Google and they'll find you. Um, just a parting thought. I'm, I'm looking forward to the day in which the, the existence of a platform such as the Institute, the assets such as the professors and the, and the companies that have been successful and the bigger companies, the supply of talent, of the supply of entrepreneurs that the that the winning of this kind of challenge grant won't have to have money attached to it. That'll be such a powerful signal, and this in the future, not now, that that it'll be such a powerful signal to the investors that the investors will say, if WEDC is behind it, and the institute is behind it, and the companies are behind it, and the talent is flowing, you know what, this is an incredible investment opportunity for me, and I'll rush in, and I'll take the place of all the government funding and all the other kinds of funding. I think the stimulation of the WEDC is critical at this stage, but in the future, I hope that this will suck in the investors as well, because then you see, see things start to become self-fulfilling and self-sustaining. I'm sure it will happen. Anyway. I agree. Actually, Dan, one of the things that uh, I often say is we're looking to make those companies uh, beneficiaries and not always benefactors. Absolutely. So these are the virtuous cycles that we try to create and scale up Milwaukee. And again, let me thank the WDC, UWM, WIDA, GMC, American Express, the mayor, the governor, the county executive, and everybody else uh, who's involved, been involved, or those of you who don't yet know that you're going to be critical to this project. You are going to be critical. Scale up Milwaukee. You know, I, I have to last, I can't resist. In the last two months, there have been three major events in which companies, Milwaukee Entrepreneurial Ventures, the region, the region, entrepreneurs have been acquired or received major investments or have major contracts. The world doesn't know it. I mean, we've got to, we've got to just let people know uh, uh, that, that there, are, there are incredible entrepreneurial assets here. Anyway, thank you all very much. Tweet this out. Get your, thank you. your followers to listen to this, and uh, good luck. See you soon. Great. Thank you very much. Just count to five.